Um, hi guys. I did something that I really regret and I don't know why I did it and it is so against all of my principles. After all this time that I have told you guys not to give in to brands trying to appeal to you being a fan of something to make money. Don't let brands manipulate your love of some intellectual property into giving them money for something that has nothing to do with that thing. And then, on my way home from work, I stopped at the bodega to get ramen, and um, I saw these. These are Game of Thrones Oreos. Cool. It's like a like a wolf or a lion or a drag one of those things why did I do this <laughs> just because I like Game of Thrones if I eat this I'm gonna mess up my lip gloss that's for after basically I'm a huge hypocrite and you shouldn't trust anything I say hey sis I'm a super bad bitch and I only hang around with other bad chicks I'm myself and you say I'm hard to deal with Anyone else listening to exclusively Megan the Stallion and no one else? Tina Snow, we in here, get with the winning team. <laughs> We're gonna do a chatting about new product releases video. Some of this stuff is stuff I've been saving for quite a while. I have been super busy at my day job and also I'm about to move in about three weeks. So I haven't been super YouTube minded and I'm sorry about that, but here's the video for you. First of all, Give Me Glow Cosmetics is trying to sing a siren song into my ears with this palette right here. This is the Juicy Olive palette. It has four matte shades and two foils and good God, it's a sexy little number. I'm actually a big fan of smaller monochromatic palettes. I, I think that with brights, especially monochromatic brights, it's helpful to have a gradient of colors so that you can make a gradient on your eyes or wherever you're putting these shadows. This is beautiful to me. If I didn't already have the September Rose Cosmetics Slush Palette, which has a couple very similar matte greens, I would buy this if not for that. This is $30 which isn't like ridiculous. Um, oh, I'm looking at it again. My God, she's real pretty. She's real pretty. And also I love green olives. I think they're delicious. Black olives, we don't know her. As far as I'm concerned, black olives on a pizza is worse than pineapples on pizza. And I will not argue with you cause I'm correct. I. Oh, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, I mentioned in my birthday haul when I was talking about the Tarte Icy Butch palette that its highlight is actually quite flattering on me and I'm wearing it right now. The highlight on my face is the highlight from the Tarte Icy Betch palette. So if you're wondering what it looks like on a person with deeper skin, like this, you're welcome. This next thing is ice cold tea. A lot of the products I'm talking about, I saved on Instagram quite a while ago because like I said, I've been booked and busy. This was posted on Trendwood on April 15th and I'm just now getting to it. Doesn't matter. Apparently Haley Baldwin, now Haley Bieber, who is a model of some variety and also wife of Justin Bieber, who was a musician of some variety, is supposedly coming out with a makeup line at some point. There aren't really many details about this, but it might happen. Basically, it's a picture of her putting on makeup underneath text that says Bieber Beauty, and that could really mean anything. The reason I wanted to bring this up is I've seen a couple people make a really hilarious point about this, which is that celebrity makeup lines are the new celebrity perfume lines, which is like, galaxy brain. Yeah. Dude, I, when I was a kid, for reference, I'm 25. So I did a lot of my cognitive development as a young adolescent in like the early to mid 2000s, which is why it's my favorite decade stylistically. I couldn't watch anything on TV without seeing a commercial for Britney Spears' Curious or Beyonce's Heat or JLo Glow or Mary-Kate and Ashley Malibu Styles. I had JLo Glow and I, I, boy, I tell you what, when I put that on to saunter into eighth grade algebra one, you couldn't have told me anything beach I was like mm -hmm. the square root of me is beauty literally what is it I literally don't have time for this I'm actually hurrying through this video so I can order mechas oh here's another zoom in worthy side note a lot of you guys ask me frequently what nail polishes I'm wearing and I always feel like an absolute dingus because one of my personal hobbies is mixing up my nail polishes um, so that I can have like fun custom colors. And if I don't like a polish or if it's too sheer, I like to mix it with something else. And if you're a patron of me, uh, you've heard me say this exact thing already. <laughs> um, but I am still wearing the nail polish I did when I filmed my last thing for Patreon, so it's perfect. I'm talking about this because I'm actually wearing a nail polish that you can buy today. 
on my nails is the shade Lavender Out Loud from the Wet n Wild One Step Wonder Gel collection. It is not mixed with anything. I did nothing to it. I bought it and I put it on my fingernails. That's it. Fingernails are very long right now, which means one of them is gonna break and I'm so nervous. Update, it happened. Let's continue. Huda Catan is a very controversial figure in the makeup world, especially and possibly exclusively in the internet makeup world because I feel like people who don't pay a ton of attention to beauty YouTube and beauty Instagram and beauty Reddit, as it were, don't really care about many of her controversies. There are a lot of reasons why people have beef with Huda Catan on her very successful makeup Instagram that very much launched her as a creator into the makeup world at large, a creator and also a brand owner. She wasn't really heavily featuring men of color, not men of color, gay men, and also gay men of color, I, I guess, <laughs> on her Instagram. A lot of people were saying it's because she was based in Dubai and that could result in a lot of like social backlash. I wanna clarify that when I say people were criticizing her for not featuring gay men on her beauty Instagram, this was in like 2015 and 16, maybe 2017. The problem doesn't seem to be nearly as evident now. There seems to be a lot more equal distribution of featuring gay men on her Instagram. I just didn't want anybody to think that I meant like now she's having the same problem because it doesn't seem like she is. But anyway, back to the freaking video. One of the biggest drama bombs, I guess, with Huda Beauty is when they made an ad campaign for their new setting powder. New, I mean, like at the time it was new historical present, you know what I mean? That was centered around baking. And I think she was like in an apron and she was baking stuff. And it was like makeup and baking and everything. And people were saying like, you're copying the indie brand Beauty Bakery. My personal opinion on that matter was like, first of all, people went way overboard with it. The CEO of Beauty Bakery herself was like, guys, Literally, it's fine. My opinion on the matter is that it's hard to demonize Huda Catan for using baking in an ad campaign about a loose setting powder when I feel like she very much had a hand with the process of bringing the concept of very severe contouring and baking your makeup out of the drag community where it had been a mainstay for obviously a very, very long time and taking it and bringing it sort of into the cultural concept, consciousness. <laughs> and sort of making other people aware that this was a thing you could do. And, you know, think back to like 2015, every single video was like super extreme contouring, super extreme color correcting and baking everything to high heaven. And Huda Catan really had a hand in making that popular. So I wouldn't necessarily say that just using baking as a ad campaign concept is something that is like owned by a beauty bakery. It's not like the product itself was based around like baking and like bakeries and cooking and whatnot, whereas beauty bakery's whole aesthetic is that and it's very cute. Beauty bakery is like the only super cutesy high concept packaging that I actually really like consistently and I'll get to that my whole thing with cute packaging in a second. I'm talking about stuff that happened two years ago. Oh my God, Nisa. Then there was that whole, ah, uh, vaginal bleaching thing. I sort of feel a way about Huda Gatan the same way I feel about like the Kardashians, which is that she exists and I don't really care about her and I don't hate her, but I'm not very interested in supporting her and whatnot. So I don't really buy from Huda Beauty. It's not, they don't make things I'm interested in. And also their products are really expensive. So it's just not really like necessary for me. Basically, all of this was an extraordinarily roundabout way to talk about Huda Beauty coming out with skincare. I guess this is useful because it's not like I've ever really talked about Huda Beauty too much in my channel. So now we know my opinion on that brand and my perception of that brand. This is another thing sort of like the Bieber Beauty thing where all I really have to go off of is an idea that this is a thing that's going to happen. That's a picture of her face with a bunch of makeup on. And the caption she wrote is new skincare line coming. These products have changed my life. Um, okay. My thing about skincare is that I am bad at keeping up with it. I don't think Huda Catan is someone that I think is the best resource for skincare advice, seeing as she makes like one of the fullest coverage foundations out there and she is often wearing a very full face of makeup. She helped popularize very thick and very intense and very evident makeup, which if that's what you prefer, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you should wear exactly how much or how little makeup you personally want. I'm just saying that's been her gig for a while. And she also, no shade to this either because I've had plastic surgery. She's had some, she's had some work done. She's had some procedures. If you're wondering, I had a breast reduction, but it was done by a plastic surgeon, so that counts. 
Trisha Paytas, I'm coming for your gig. I guess in short, my perspective of the idea of a Huda Beauty skincare line is that there are better resources for both good skincare and advice about skincare than someone who wears and makes a very thick foundation and also has gotten cosmetic procedures done that will enhance the look of one's skin without necessarily skincare. Or if it is skincare based, it's super expensive, like, I don't know, vampire bat, venom, cow mucus, snail consciousness just injected into all your skin cells. I don't know, expensive skincare is terrifying. And that's just kind of how I feel about it. Sorry, Huda, I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> A couple people let me know that Sugar Pill is coming out with lip glosses. I like that it's a thing now where people just let me know when brands come out with lip glosses. It honestly very much flatters me that I am now the patron saint of lip gloss for many of you. That's honestly been my goal with having a YouTube channel. I'm blessed and flattered. Thank you. For reference, I am wearing the ColourPop So Juicy lip gloss in the shade All Talk right now. What I like about the ColourPop glosses is that they are thick, very sheer, very plush and moisturizing on the lips. They have a lot of grip to the lip because they have a little bit of a stick. Love them. They are everything that it doesn't look like these sugar pill glosses are going to be. The color and shade I have for you right now is the shade TTYN, which is a very glittery magenta berry. I don't like super glittery lip glosses and I also do not like super pigmented lip glosses. And this just sort of looks like a shiny lipstick, which is fine, but it's not really my gig. So I'm not very interested in buying this. I've also heard from some people that sugar pills lip products can be kind of a hit or miss. I'm sorry. I want to like Sugar Pill. I've heard they're a little bit hit or miss. And they're also too expensive to just sort of like flippantly buy whatever I want for them and experiment and whatever. So unfortunately, I don't have a ton of experience with Sugar Pill. But love their aesthetic. You go, Sugar Pill. Four for you, Sugar Pill. <laughs> it's time, sis. We gotta talk about the cover of Egg's blush duos. Beautiful. Like, uh, poetic cinema. Cover Effects is a brand that has haunted me, plagued me for quite a while. And these these blush duos, especially the center row, sis, that like sort of salmon-y one on the end, these are $38. This is ridiculous. Beautiful, and I really think I would use it a lot. I'm trembling. I'm so into these. I'm so obsessed. I use the word obsessed too much. I'm so enthused about these. I think they're lovely. I might do it. I might could do it. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet, but just know that I really want to. And I have a gift card. I swear to God, Cover Effects is like, it's like I'm Heathcliff and Cover Effects is Kathy at my window. And to spare your ears, I will not break into singing Wuthering Eyes right now. I will move on and you can just sing it in your heads. Bitch, Kate, mother forking bush. Ooh, ColourPop is coming out with gel eyeliners. I historically and famously dislike gel eyeliners. I'm a brush tip eyeliner type of gal. Like I said in my birthday haul, if you were curious about my opinions about eyeliner, I have an entire video about them. I looked at these and these ones on the pots and I was not thinking I can use them as an eyeliner. I was thinking I'm gonna use that as a cream eyeshadow, which I don't even know if you can do, but my eyes immediately went to those yellow and orange ones. Bright yellow and orange are like my white whale eyeshadow colors. I find them very hard to locate in a good formula. I just wanna say you guys are super sweet about recommending me products all the time and I genuinely do appreciate it, but don't feel the need to recommend me Flame Point and Butter Cupcake from Sugar Pill as good orange and yellow shadows. I have actually owned them before and I did not have a good experience with them. I don't like them. So I've already been to those grounds and I don't need to go back. A lot of people say that dark purple is the hardest eyeshadow color to get right. I don't agree with that at all. I think it's orange. I used to think it was yellow and then I got the September Rose Slush palette and the yellow in that palette is a slapper. It's amazing. Matte orange, awful. A lot of brands, they go for this very hyper matte pastel creamsicle orange that I just don't like. It's hard to find an orange without that under layer of pink to it. The closest I've come is the single Ooh from ColourPop. If the swatch is weak, I'm gonna look like such a freaking liar. Oh, damn. That's to date the best matte orange eyeshadow I've ever used. It's not perfect. 
but it's very good. ColourPop is a very fun brand for me because of the same reason why it's a dangerous brand for me. It's super accessible price-wise, and that means that I'm always liable to buy a solid chunk of ColourPop products at the same time. Because in addition to everything being inexpensive, their free shipping limit is like $30, but their flat shipping cost is like $6, which is the average price of like everything they sell. So if you have like 20 bucks worth of ColourPop stuff in your cart and you're like, I don't want to pay five whatever for shipping. Let me just go toss like two more Super Shock shadows in my cart and then I'll have free shipping and I got more makeup. It's so dangerous, <laughs> but I fall for it every time. As much as I like to talk about how like they definitely lead to overconsumption of makeup and having too much makeup and just piling makeup around you because it's cheap and easy to get, I also appreciate that they are there for people for whom high-end makeup is financially inaccessible but still want to experiment. I tweeted this, and I know I said this in a very recent video, but if you don't follow me on Twitter, my Twitter is basically a rehearsal for jokes that end up in my videos. ColourPop is to me now what NYX was to me in 2012. A very fun, cheap brand I could use to experiment. It was super exciting, and now NYX is like, Oh, you want this, you want this eyeshadow palette, bitch? Let me ask you this, do you have $35? NARS, which is a brand that I wish I could buy from, but I can't because I'm cruelty free or trying to go cruelty free. And NARS is not, and it makes me very sad. NARS is coming out with a blush palette based off of the very, very successful cult product from NARS, the Orgasm and Super Orgasm blushes. But this palette takes the orgasm theme to an entirely different level. Full disclosure, I think this palette is beautiful and I would buy it if I needed a blush palette and also could purchase from NARS. Six shimmery shades, 49 shimmery dollars. Let's go through these shades. We have Orgasm, Orgasm Ecstasy, Deep Orgasm, Super Orgasm, Double Orgasm, and my favorite, Orgasm Fever. That one's a special little shade name. Every time I hear that, I think about if Orgasm Fever was like an actual illness. Let me paint the picture for you. You're like in the middle of the business with your significant other or whomstever and all of a sudden it's just like, wait, wait, Trent, stop. What? What's wrong? Do you want me to switch it to a different Tame Impala song? Uh, no, um, oh God, I should have told you this already at dinner. I have this uh, condition. Okay. It's called orgasm fever. All right, that's kind of hot. No, um, I'm going to start convulsing very, very soon. You should probably call a hospital. <laughs> End scene. That Tame Impala thing. Sometimes we have to draw from our own memories and put it into our art. Let's continue. <coughs> we gonna talk about Glam Light, y'all. If you're not familiar, Glam Light is the brand that made the Mimetic Pizza palette, and now they're coming out with a burger palette and a taco palette. Now we're gonna cycle back to what I was talking about earlier, which is my whole thing with cute, high-concept packaging. I'm not a massive fan of it. I prefer things to be kind of minimalist and sleek. It's just not something I'm a fan of. I have, like, the same beef with Violet Voss. I think Violet Voss has some of the ugliest outer packaging, like, any brand makes. No shade if you love Violet Voss or if you are Violet Voss. Voss. Miss Voss, I'm so sorry. Just, girl, what is this? What is this? I know we're talking about a different brand, but what is this? I just don't like super cutesy stuff. What's that brand that like makes those palettes that look like candy bars and like candy packages? I'll put the pictures up here because I can't remember the name right now. I don't really like that. I'm just not a huge fan of it. I like something very stripped down, very Christina Aguilera stripped, <laughs> which is ironically like she was doing a lot that era with the whole Anyway, I was watch I was I, I listened to Come On Over on loop at work today, which is not from that album. I'm just all over the place. God. Anyway, I feel like there's a lot of overlap between the burger palette and the taco palette. The taco palette speaks to me a little bit more. It's a little bit more muted and it's got those shimmers and I love a good shimmer. I have thousands of them. That's how you know I love them. I feel like with Glam Light palettes, they're actually very similar to Violet Voss. Glam Light is like the brights version of Violet Voss palettes in that if you have one of them, you don't really need to have more than one. Violet Voss, to its credit, has done, I'm talking about Violet Voss a lot in this segment that's not about their palettes. Wild. <laughs> I love being focused. They've done the Sugar Crystal, Sugar Rush, Wreck-It Ralph, I don't know what it's called, but it's this one. They had the Flamingo one that I didn't buy. They had the Rainbow palette, and I know people like the Rainbow palette, because every single time I go to a Sephora and see it sitting sad and alone on an end cap there, it is just swatched to death. It's swatched so aggressively, it looks like Thanos with full Infinity Gauntlet went in there and was like, all this for a drop of pigmentation? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. So they do color, but like the first couple of Violet Voss palettes were all like, 
here's a whole row of the same shade of orange and a whole row of the same shade of maroon and a whole row of the same shade of brown. And Glam Light is like, here's all the bright colors we can think of in a food. I think if you like fun stuff like this, this might be a great buy. You're supporting an indie brand that I'm pretty sure is Latina owned, which is awesome. Far be it from me to, and I'm gonna use a phrase that is my least favorite phrase in the English language here, second least favorite. We know what my first least favorite is if you watched my birthday haul video. Far be it for me to yuck anyone's yum when it comes to fun, bright, kooky themed eyeshadow palettes. I don't think you need these, especially because this taco palette is $38. But like, if you wanna buy a taco, frickin' buy a taco. I go back to this point a lot, but the world is on fire buy a taco, whether or not you can eat it or not, you know? Before I move on from talking about Glam Light, I do want to <laughs> put the social justice harpy glasses on for just a second to acknowledge that this palette is launching on Cinco de Mayo on May 5th. And I just want to make sure that we're all aware of what that holiday means and its significance. The holiday Cinco de Mayo is to commemorate the 1862 Battle of Puebla. A lot of Americans, use it as an excuse to get super drunk and uh, shake maracas and wear sombreros and just be general disrespectful disasters. So let's be aware of what it means, be aware of its significance, and not use it as an excuse to be just aggressively shwasted in public and manage to offend all of our Latino friends. Not even our Mexican friends, all of them. Racism finds a way. Okay, let's freaking continue. I would like to put back on my lip gloss crown to talk about two lip glosses that I will 1 billion percent not be buying. The first one is not even out yet. Apparently Jeffree Star Cosmetics is coming out with lip glosses according to a tweet from Trendabood. Nori, nor, 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 it's not happening. Jeffree Star will not successfully sell me lip glosses. That's not happening. This is going away, this is going away too long. <laughs> La Mer. La freaking Mare is coming out with some lip products that I think y'all should know about. They're coming out with a lip volumizer, which is described as an iridescent sheen gloss with an irresistible sensation. Infused with miracle broth, this serum inspired treatment instantly plumps, protects, and visibly softens lines for lips that look immediately more defined. And a lip balm, which smooths and softens dry lips. The lip balm is $65 the lip volumizer, which, which you should remember is infused with miracle broth, which sounds like a soup they make in Pokemon. It costs $75. That's like an electric bill and a half. $75 is how much I pay for a box of my contact lenses that I need to wear every day. Like I just, I, because of what? Because of the miracle broth? Like, cause it's got miracle soup in it. There's no way this miracle broth is better than the best soups I've had, okay? I bet you I would be happier putting some just regular Campbell's Chunky in my lip gloss than I would buying a $75 miracle broth gloss from La Mer. La Mer, how about you make like your name and evaporate? Oh snap, on the note of wild lip balms, remember that Tatcha $55 lipstick from like a bunch of videos ago? It's getting friends. Tatcha is adding some products to the Magnolia Bloom lipstick. The Magnolia Bloom lip liner pairs perfectly with the silk lipstick, which is like super useful if you're a person of color buying this lipstick and it's too light for you to wear on its own. Having a lip liner that's the exact same color and not say darker, it's gonna go so well for you. I'm. S it's gonna be great. And then the Magnolia Bloom Camellia Lip Balm, which has this chintzy looking plastic cap on it, by the way. This looks like something I would've gotten in Scholastic Book Orders in 2006, but go off sis, I guess. Magnolia Bloom Camellia Lip Balm, luxurious lip balm, appears vivid in the jar, but when applied, lends a gorgeous rose tint that is the perfect wash of color. Okay, so you could buy the Glossier Cherry Bomb.com for $12 and get like the exact same effect. Cool, got it. The trio costs $85. $85 for a lip balm you have to apply with your dirty finger, a lipstick, and a wooden lip liner that you have to sharpen and waste every time you sharpen it. <laughs> you know what? I think if it was between buying this for $85 and buying the Miracle Soup Gloss from The Ocean, I'd probably go with La Mer on this one, y'all. What is your makeup budget like where like, 
seven you could just flippantly spend 75 dollars on a lip gloss like what is that one drill tweet oh i found it food 200 dollars. data 150 rent 800 candles 3600 utility 150 someone who's good at the economy please help me budget this my family is dying like someone who's buying that lamaire stuff is like lip gloss <laughs> 250 utility 150 someone is good at the economy please let me budget this my family is dying but our lips are soft and kissable like i can't it's always ridiculous i know it's luxury but it's ridiculous luxury which i guess is what luxury is by default but no that's there's no there's nothing that anyone can tell me about those products that will rationalize them to me i don't care i don't care so tart is coming out what? 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 We own you, you boss babe, Barbara? Oh my god, no. God damn it, how did you get in my house again? Hey boss babe, how did you wake up this morning? What? Flawless, me too. I just came to give you the good news. That you are now one of us. We own you now. What are you talking about? It was it was PR, it was a gift. You know, to show that we're all in on it, it's a joke. <coughs> How did you get this in my body? Why don't we look at the facts? You made a video about us, slandering our name, and we graciously sent you a nice message telling you we thought it was so LOLZ super funny. And you responded enthusiastically. And so we continued. We sent you an email using our decoy Barbara, Lauren, and you responded even more enthusiastically, almost desperate, like you wanted so dearly and so deeply for us to be your BFF. FF. What are you talking about? <laughs> best fun and fresh friend for Evsies. <sighs> and then we put together the best little curated PR package you ever saw in your little life. And we sent it to your miserable little one bedroom. And you opened it up and you were so excited. You showed your patrons in your patron discord, patreon.com slash Pisa. And then you put a picture of it on Instagram. And then you put it in a YouTube video and you were so sweet. You did such a good job pretending to dislike Icy Fetch so your fans would trust you. <laughs> it was honestly a genius level move and us level move. I'm not one of you, okay? I'm I'm me. I'm Nisa Nisi Pisa. First name Nisa, last name Nisi Pisa. Let's face facts. You're a Barbara. You've always been a Barbara, even if you didn't even know it. <gasps> okay, okay, fine, fine, okay, fine. So I'm one of you. I'm a Barbara. What does that actually mean? What are you gonna do? You're gonna get inside my brain and make me talk positively about your new releases? That's impossible. Just because, just because you made this happen, that doesn't mean you get inside my mind, okay? Because my mind, yeah, is behind a fence, an impenetrable wall of individuality and freaking wisdom. So try getting past that. <laughs> You poor, sweet, delusional, paranoid little tartlet. Of course we're not going to implant positive opinions about our products in your head before they release. That would be impossible. But in any case, let's go back to what you were talking about. You were going to talk about the Big Ego Mascara, right? Yeah, the Big Ego Mascara. I was about to talk about it before you rudely interrupted me by putting that piece of paper inside my body. Right, yes. And what were you going to say about it? Um. I was gonna say that it's, uh, it's a mascara, and I I love mascara. Mm. It's my it's the most important part of my beauty routine. What about that brush shape? I was gonna say that it has a has an hourglass brush, which is my favorite brush shape. Okay. And the outer packaging? It's cute. I love the color pink. Interesting. And. Then what were you gonna say? I was gonna jokingly ask about why I wasn't invited on the Big Ego Girls Leadership Conference Summit held from July 19th to 22nd, hosted by Tarte Cosmetics, which I know about because I, I follow your Instagram. And why do you follow our Instagram? Because I hope that maybe you'll keep messaging me. And why do you hope that? <laughs> Please don't make me say it. Say it. Because I'm a Barbara. Yes. Yes. 
Yas. I've always been a Barbara. <laughs> Even in my blackest sleep. And in my deepest nightmares, I've been a Barbara. <laughs> Wait a minute, I hate kale smoothies. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you, 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 you will never be one of us. Never! <sighs> okay. Well, that was freaking strange. Um, yeah, so Tarte's coming out with a mascara called the Big Ego Mascara. It's pink, the bottle it is, the mascara in it is black because it's a mascara. <laughs> It's an hourglass shaped brush and I really like hourglass shaped brushes and I explained why in my birthday haul video. Basically, short version of why I like hourglass shaped brushes is they're really great at hugging all your lashes at the same time. I have to be honest, I am mildly annoyed that Tarte didn't invite me to this leadership summit. I'm a leader. Basically my attitude towards this mascara is that high-end mascaras, I just really don't think buying them in a full size is ever worth it. Who knows how amazing this is. The whole thing of it is it's $23 and I think that is very excessive to pay for a mascara. But I'm not just gonna say that and not give you something to spend your money on otherwise. This doesn't look like it, but this is the ColourPop BFF mascara. It's got real inexpensive packaging, so all of the writing on it rubbed off, but Here's the tea. This is a very volumizing hourglass bristle shaped mascara and I really, really like it. And the fun thing about these is they come in a bunch of fun freaking colors. This one is black because I'm not that adventurous, but I love this. I would definitely repurchase this. And this is what, like $6 ColourPop? If you are still experimenting with what sort of mascara wand types you prefer, which I've tried, easily a hundred mascaras in my life. It's really not an exaggeration. I've been a mascara bench for a very long time and I have only recently settled on actually liking hourglass mascaras. Oh my God. Wow. That was probably the most melodramatic Barbara sketch ever. People are not gonna like that one. That was not funny and it only contained one real joke at the expense of the Barbaras. Sorry, I was improvising that completely. Sometimes I write those beforehand. This was not one of those times. Lads, thank you so much for watching my video. But before you leave, I'm gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me, that would be absolutely excellent. And if you would like to interact with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Nisi Pisa. I also have a second channel called Extra Nisi Pisa that I will link in the description where I post music and covers. And I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Nisi Pisa, where I post extras, a weekly 40 or so minute long stream of consciousness type video and other stuff on occasion. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to use code Nisi Pisa at your local sellout store. Bye guys. Okay, bitch, can you like arrest someone at a different time or never because the prison industrial complex is already pretty freaking stuffed full? Thanks. <laughs>